Hello, welcome to Robert Inventor channel on YouTube. So, this is Bob's metronome, and uh, I'm Robert, I'm the chap who invented it. So, this talk is going to be about uh, relaxation in metronome practice, and uh, I'll be using Bob's metronome to illustrate it. So, I'll be talking about relaxation and, enjoy and enjoyment in metronome practice and some new ideas that ideas that will be new to most musicians and so what you will be familiar with most musicians are familiar with is using a metronome as a, as a standard of tempo so you set the metronome to the tempo you want or you can use it to make sure you're playing at a steady tempo and to adjust the tempo uh, gradually uh, so that is of course part of metronome technique but there's a whole lot more to it there's uh, uh, much much more to it than that and the new the main thing that's been new to you probably is using a metronome as a I uh, could say as a time reference so it's as a standard of time in a very precise way so using the metronome a millisecond level kind of uh, uh, way of indicating the time and so with these these uh, these various uh, ideas and techniques then and you're taking your natural human sense of rhythm and you're using the metronome uh, to help with precise timing without ever losing the fluidity of rhythm that you have so there are music teachers that teach in this way and there are a couple of books on the subject but uh, it seems that musicians generally uh, there's not very much awareness of this yet so I think it's a good chance that this material will be new to most of you who are watching this video and particularly on YouTube uh, this it seems that this is the first video that goes into this in any depth at all that goes into this subject so uh, so I'm going to uh, talk in a fair amount of detail I'm not going to hold back on the details uh, later on maybe it can be done more quickly and uh, and so my aim here is to get you off to a good start so it's the relaxation and the enjoyment and get you off to a good start and to talk also about some of the things that, can, that could go wrong and to make sure they don't happen and there's, uh, but there's a vast amount on this so it's like you could easily have a whole course on metronome technique and so my, my aim here is to bring together the musicians who clearly can benefit from this and uh, the men, if you aren't, if you haven't come across this technique, there are many uh, useful ideas and things that you can use. And then there's the uh, books and the uh, music teachers who are teaching the technique, and to help bring it together. And so it's a good chance because, like the Robert Inventor channel is getting quite popular these days. So, so I think there's a, a chance that it, there's some musicians it'll reach some musicians who this will be useful to, and of course the users of Bounce Metronome as well. And so, and where I'm coming at it, I'm like in the middle. I'm the chap who designed the metronome, and I'm a music software programmer of course and uh, my background is in maths my first degree is in maths and also there's philosophy and general science is my kind of background and so and my focus in working on balanced metronome has been on this relaxation aspect and it seems it's definitely worked because I get emails from users saying that they find it refreshingly um, and it's in, in a, a rhythm the metronome to play with and they find they do find it is helpful in this way so I'm hopeful that some of these ideas that I will say here about relaxation that's maybe a few new ideas that uh, that's perhaps what I can contribute myself mainly it is to uh, introduce you to to the, this technique which is probably new to you and I thought a good way to start this all off 
was to stop with some open questions. So it's creative, open-ended, so uh, an inquiring approach to it, because I think that's a good way to approach this. So, uh, and this being YouTube, I'm going to divide this into a series of smaller videos rather than one long video, and I'll make them into a playlist. So this first video is, part of the video is about uh, these open questions and, and uh, things to do with uh, natural musicality. So I thought a good way to, to approach these questions would to be start with the different levels of uh, uh, musicians with a metronome and beginner, intermediate and advanced. So if you play like a wind instrument, like myself, a recorder, a wind player, or you, or uh, singing, or something like this, a quiet instrument or an instrument without much attack, then the chances are that you, uh, depending on your style of music, but you may have found that you could just set the metronome going and you can play along with it. But uh, you can practice with it. But uh, if you play uh, percussion or Pianists, many uh, pianists and percussion and drummers, if you start with the metronome as a drummer, then you may find it's really quite hard to get started at all using it. Uh, uh, quite a fair number of musicians uh, find it really hard to get started with the metronome. So that's the first question. Uh, but uh, uh, often, even if, it's, if you're a good musician, uh, uh, and a good sense of rhythm, it, uh, that does, can actually make it even harder, as we'll see. So, uh, so then the question is, rather than, uh, it's quite common to kind of give up at that stage, I gather, but rather than just either give up, and rather indeed than to kind of struggle and put a lot of effort in and eventually get it, is to, uh, and if you're at that level, uh, if, you're, if that's your situation, then uh, to think about what is it about the metronome that makes it awkward to play with and try and listen clearly to what's going on and trying to understand what is happening and then see if you can turn it around and to find a way to make it easy and relaxing. And the thing is that also the plus side is that with percussion you have access to the highest le level of extreme precision with the metronome. So on the positive side, that's the it's a really great tool as well, and uh, you'll see how actually starting with percussion helps all musicians. So that's the beginning question, and that's not necessarily a beginner musician as well. It could be that you are a drummer and that you've played with a band or whatever for many years, uh, but it's the first time you've played with a metronome, and the same issues can arise. It can be really hard to play with the metronome at all to start with. So that's an interesting question. Why should that be? And try to understand in some depth why it is, and then how, with technique, can you address that and make it really easy right from the beginning to work with the metronome? <coughs> so uh, now at the intermediate level, then uh, then that's and that be a situation I would say that I'm in. Then the you have the metronome, but the chances are you just leave it in its box and you get it out when you want to check the tempo of the piece of music, you should, what tempo you should be playing at, and you hardly use it for much else. Um, but you may have many issues of timing and tempo still. It could be subtle, it could be not so subtle. So for instance, maybe you intend to play at a steady tempo, but your tempo gradually increases or decreases for the duration of the piece. Or it might be that you have timing issues, so you have a particular difficult passage and you you just find hard to fit all the notes in, so you slightly stretch the measure without being particularly aware that you're doing it, or you make, you rush it and you make the measure a bit too short. And the same thing if you've got a, a measure with just one or two notes in it, and because of the, it just aren't many notes to give you your kind of bearings, then that can be a long in time as well, either too slow or too, too uh, fast or too slow. So you might have all these kind of timing issues and some of them you're aware of. And uh, uh, so you would think that the metronome would be an ideal tool for dealing with these issues. But uh, generally uh, musicians don't use it so much So for this, uh, for fixing this sort of thing. So the question is why 
Is there something about the convention that makes it a bit difficult and awkward and can we turn that around and make it easy? And indeed, many musicians uh, find the metronome rather an annoying thing, and so how can we turn that around to make it more relaxing and, uh, and effortless and pleasurable to work with? So that would be like the intermediate level question. Now, the next would be to advanced. Well, that is like, I mean, musicians who use the metronome a lot. So musicians who use it most would be drummers in the uh, Western European uh, I think originated style of music, uh, America, Western European, of uh, uh, where you have a very, uh, very steady beat and measure, and for minutes on end, you the measure never varies and the beat never varies. And uh, so, if you're in this style of music, you may yeah, often a uh, frequent situation is where the band in the band and they uh, they may complain about their drummer and they're trying to say in a tactful way to say to the drummer uh, that your your timing isn't quite steady and so uh, if that happens do be considerate and bear in mind that it is actually because it's a genuinely uh, difficult thing for a human being to do and we'll see that just even keeping a very steady tempo in this kind of such an exact steady tempo is by itself uh, that by itself is uh, not as easy as you'd have thought it was. And on top of that, your drummer is playing interest, exciting, interesting rhythms on top of that as well, without losing that. So it's no wonder. And uh, uh, certainly some users of my Rappan's metronome in these traditions will uh, spend hours every day practicing with the metronome, can be. So, so if you're in this... Uh, if that's your situation, then the another thing to think about here is uh, it's just uh, be more creative and to think are there other ways that you can use the metronome and can you anticipate what some of this new technique might be and uh, ways of accessing the metronome with extreme precision of the metronome on the millisecond level and maybe different ways, especially if the main way you practice with the metronome is that you just play your music with the metronome uh, for hours and end, then there's definitely a whole lot of other ways you can use the metronome uh, that uh, may lead you more directly to your part, to your, to your aim of the extreme precision that you're trying to achieve. So, so that's the kind of advanced level question. Now, now I want to talk a little bit about the whole issue: should you use the metronome at all? And uh, and about uh, natural sense of rhythm. So uh, classical music is quite interesting in this respect because you have the full spectrum from musicians who rarely use the metronome or indeed may decide I'm never going to use the metronome and you have at the other end musicians who are really enthusiastic about using the metronome all within uh, playing the same pieces of music. So that's kind of quite interesting. And uh, so then, uh, if rather than just say, oh, there's some famous musician that said, don't use a metronome, so you don't use it, is to, uh, if you've got, especially for timing and tempo issues and you want to use a metronome, is to think about uh, what's the reason they're criticizing it? And are they criticizing the metronome as such, or are they criticizing rather metronome technique and the way that the metronome is normally used? And might there be other ways of working with the metronome, which don't have the same issues. Because if you think about it, all the metronome is doing is indicating the time very precisely, very precise indication of time. So can there be other ways of working with the metronome? Uh, and certainly it seems that musicians who you do use the metronome a lot, they still seem to have, be able to have a wonderful sense of rhythm. So I don't think you really need to worry that using a metronome is going to spoil your sense of rhythm. But there is something in this criticism and it's definitely worth thinking through. And uh, try, if you having decided that you do want to use a metronome, to uh, try and think about what these issues are and how to address them. So, and then, so then the other thing I want to talk about is like this, uh, that the use of the, met uh, 
that rhythm is something that comes naturally to human beings. We have rhythm in our lives, and it can be. Uh, it's not so easy for some people to bring that into music, and some find it very easy. But the rhythm is natural to everything we do. And then rhythm in music is also a very natural thing. And you could say worldwide, uh, if you look at uh, the musicians with the most wonderful sense of rhythm in the world, I'm sure you will find at least as many who have never used the metronome as there are who use the metronome regularly. And uh, there are entire traditions of, of musicians where the metronome is never used. And so I would uh, mention just a few, so uh, noted for their wonderful sense of rhythm. So for instance, uh, any of the traditions of African drumming, then the chance is very high if you're native to these traditions that you don't use a metronome. If you are a flamenco musician, or Eastern European music, music or the flamenco and wonderful rhythms, and the chances are, if you're within the tradition, that you don't use a metronome. There are flamenco metronomes, you may have seen those on the web, but they are designed for musicians who aren't in the tradition. And uh, it's, uh, they're not so much for musicians with, within the tradition. I, I wouldn't like to say that they never do, but it's, uh, I gather it's quite rare. And uh, in the same way, so for instance, and then of course Latin American music, which is quite closely related. And then there's also the uh, same thing in uh, where I live here in Scotland, and so I can speak from that, is there's, we have a tradition of Scottish dance, and uh, fiddle music and all that sort of thing is noted for its wonderful sense of rhythm. And uh, I know I have an English accent, but uh, most of my relatives are in, uh, have Scottish accents, and they're in the uh, in this tradition of playing Scottish Scottish dance music. And uh, so, uh, within this tradition, then there's uh, uh, none of my relatives use the metronome at all. They never use the metronome for their music, and uh, uh, as far as I know, none of the musicians they work with either use the metronome. Uh, it's not that, that nobody ever uses it, because um, there are some musicians in the tradition who use the metronome. There are a few users of um, Barnes, there are users of Barnes metronome that are in the Scottish folk music tradition. So, uh, but it's rare, it's certainly rare. And uh, so, and then. Uh, and then so you could just go around the world in most traditions. And it's not just because the uh, metronome is quite a new invention, because it was only invented in the uh, early, in the second decade of the 19th century in its modern form. So it's quite a new in invention. Uh, but the, even when musicians have the metronome available to them, they still don't use them. I uh, just mentioned one other tradition, uh, just because it's quite a different style of rhythm, would be like gamelan music, that have this wonderfully relaxed, completely different style of rhythm. But again, you know, they don't use the metronome either. And uh, so, and, the, and if you are in any of these styles of music, there is a reason why they don't use the metronome, uh, is that uh, simply you can't fit uh, this style of music to the metronome or to a click track. There's no way to get them to line up. So that's something to think about as well. And there is, for instance, this trick that you have in modern jazz, which you can set the metronome to play only, say, on the second beat of every measure. But even that trick doesn't work with these styles of rhythms. There simply is no way to align the metronome with your rhythm. And so if you're in these, any of these traditions, and you try and play along with the metronome, and playing metronome is doing exactly what it should do, it's, it's doing what it's designed to do, play the steady beat, and you play your rhythm with your wonderful um, sense of rhythm that you have, and you just find you can't play with the metronome, then you're not, the metronome is doing nothing wrong, it's doing what it's designed to do, and you're doing nothing wrong, you're playing your rhythm exactly as you should. And so it's simply that there's no way to align the two with each other. So. Uh, in that situation, again, you don't need to give up at that point. Uh, I mean, if you've got a wonderful sense of rhythm and you don't need a metronome, it's another matter. But if you decide you want to use a metronome and you need the metronome, 
then then it, the, it's just a matter of the technique. So that's the other question we think about. Given that situation, the two just don't line up. How can you start using a metronome uh, in order to deal with uh, timing issues or whatever? And uh, so, and then the final thing that I'd like to say is like uh, is to reinforce what we've been saying is that uh, rhythm is something that's natural to human beings. But the thing that perhaps isn't so natural to human being is a precise sense of time and pick the passage of time so we naturally feel that sometimes time seems to pass more quickly and more slowly and that sort of thing. So precision in time, that's the one thing. The metronome is not influenced in any way by such things and it always plays the beat exactly the same length. So uh, that is the asset of the metronome and it, it can bring that extreme precision of timing uh, into our music. We are not learning our, we're not learning rhythm from the metronome. Metron rhythm is something that is natural to human beings and uh, you may need to bring it into music. And, and so uh, both ways, if you have a wonderful sense of rhythm, and so like in these various styles of music, it's kind of social approach to music. You're brought up with music all around you during your life and uh, you're always playing with other musicians. In that situation, uh, you may have a wonderful sense of rhythm, or you might just have it naturally, and maybe you never need to use a metronome. Don't let anyone tell you that you have to use a metronome. If you've got a wonderful sense of rhythm, then you don't need to use a metronome. But if you do want to use a metronome, then you certainly can, and you, can, and you don't need to worry that you're going to lose the wonderful, fluid, human, uh, lively sense of rhythm that you have. And so now I'm going to go on to start talking about uh, these techniques and how you work with the metronome in detail and start coming up with some possible answers to all these open questions. So uh, this is the first video in this talk on metronome technique and relaxation in metronome technique. And uh, this is the Robert Inventor uh, channel on YouTube so you can subscribe up there. I will make this into a playlist and, and a link to the next video. And uh, if you like it, do click the like button down there to help other musicians to find this. And, uh, and don't forget the comments if you have any comments. And I'm really interested to hear what you have to say. If you can find all this, if you can go to this video on YouTube. Uh, so that's it for now. And thank, uh, thank you for listening and then we'll uh, go straight to the next video.